what is honor? For millions of women and girls around the world, honor means that from the day you are born, your dreams don't matter. Honor means your destiny is known, your fate is decided, and you have no choice. Honor means being told who to love, what to wear, where to walk, how to speak, and how to think. Honor means you have no education, no voice, no stake in your future. Honor means your body isn't yours and it can be cut, torn, used by another against your will. For too many, honor can mean rape, mutilation, and death. And yet, despite the millions who suffer under this form of honor, most of us don't even know about it until now. My sister was telling me how unhappy she was in her marriage. And I said to her, come to me. She said, I can't because I have to think about honor. She didn't want to dishonor the family by leaving her husband. In the end, she set herself on fire. Rubina did, and she died. The concept of honor, it's very difficult to explain it to Western societies. Honor is something that is carried and contained in women and is there to be guarded by men. Anything from wearing short sleeves, refusing to wear a headscarf, being seen talking to a man, those things can be deemed dishonorable. Thousands of women have been detained for dressing un-Islamically. Like this woman screaming as she's pushed into a police car. The honor system in Muslim-majority societies is really the basis of a lot of harm that is perpetuated against women. It's systematic, institutionalized misogyny. I was crying and begging him to stop. Then he put his hand on my mouth like this. I couldn't breathe. I was crying, but he used me anyway. The issue of forced marriages, child marriage, and honor abuse is a worldwide problem. When you do dissent with what is portrayed as mainstream belief, you are ostracized. There are threats of murder, there are threats of rape, physical mutilation. It's important to talk about what happens physically so that every human being, male and female, understand that the genitals of the female are cut. We don't need sympathy, empathy, pity. We need systematic change in the Muslim world. From Bahrain to Egypt, women have raised their voices and their fists in demanding universal rights. People of all backgrounds can make a difference. My sisters in solidarity, there has never been a better time than now to turn the tide. We need a whole army of women helping other women. We will speak up for our rights and we will bring change to our voice. Powerful, isn't it? This documentary isn't just a documentary about honor violence against women. It's a movement. We have allowed ourselves to become apathetic to the plight of so many women and girls. And you see this, and these women are powerful advocates. They work tirelessly to make change for their society. Now, many will tell you that this is an anti-religion or anti-culture message. No culture should allow for any sort of violence perceived against anyone. I don't care what religion you come from, what culture you come from, any sort of violence that takes away a person's right to who they are is wrong. I joined this movement several months ago, and I joined it for a number of reasons. I've been an advocate for women for the last eight years of my life. I advocate for women to run for political office. I advocate for women to get involved civically. I advocate for women in business and women in education, women in all forms. And this to me is important. This to me is personal. Because I work with organizations every day that help not just the women from this film, 
because this is blatant. This is absolute blatant abuse. But yet every single day here in this country, in our society, in our communities, there is violence perpetrated against women and girls. I'm just going to share a few stats with you. These are worldwide stats. This isn't specific to a, any Muslim-majority country. This isn't specific to a Christian country. 5,000 reported honor killings globally every year. More than 60 million girls worldwide are child brides, with more than 100 million expected to become child brides within the next decade. Today, about 140 women and girls live with the results of female circumcision. 6,000 women and girls are at risk for female circumcision every single day. And this happens here. When you think it doesn't happen here, it does. I've talked to individuals. I've worked with the, number, the organizations. These messages that we have to get out there. I hope you're all uncomfortable watching that documentary. I watch the documentary and every single time I watch it, it brings tears to my eyes because I understand. I don't understand their violence, but I understand abuse. I understand the abuse of power in a relationship when a partner is supposed to be loving and nurturing and turns controlling, leading to alienation from family and friends. I understand the violence and abuse perpetrated against a child that takes away the innocence of that child. And every single day, I work to make sure that another child or another woman doesn't experience. I'll talk a little bit about what happens here in this country. Every two minutes, a sexual assault is committed in this country. 20 people every minute are victims of intimate partner violence. 44% of the sexual assaults that are committed are against girls under the age of 18. Cultural acceptance is not approval for abuse against anyone. It's not a part of culture. It's not a part of religion. It is not a part of tradition. This is a message that has to be delivered every day amongst everyone. I can guarantee you every person in this room has probably seen or knows someone that's been abused. How many people have walked past a woman that has a visible bruise and did nothing about it? How many people have seen situations where a partner is abusing another partner, maybe not physically, but verbally and emotionally, and done nothing about it? We can no longer be apathetic to this issue. We need to be out there. We need to be standing up. We need to be making sure that our message is delivered. I have three children. I have an 11 and 13 year old boy and a 24 year old girl. I hope that they never ever have to experience any form of violence. And as much as I'd love to insulate them and hope that they never have to know what goes on, I need them to know because I need them to be a part of the change that must take place in this country, in our society, in our communities, in our homes, in our backyards. We can no longer sit back. First inclination is to step away. We need to change that inclination and step forward. We need to be a part of the change that has to happen. They talk about systemic change. That's what this is. This needs to be a movement. We can no longer tolerate violence. We recently, you've seen everything that's happened with the NFL. And for so long, it was see no evil, hear no evil, so there's no evil to speak about. And we have idolized those same individuals who have perpetrated violence against their partners. We allow our children to idolize them. And that has to stop. They have to be held accountable for the work that they're doing and for what they're doing against members of their family, members of their community. It is not acceptable to abuse. 
We need to make sure that we hold the organizations, the NFL, the, the NBA, Major League Baseball, all of them, any organization where an individual is someone that we look up to, they need to understand that they're held to a higher standard. That was blatant abuse. But yet what we allow to happen every single day in our own communities is completely wrong. We need to make sure that we're not part of that problem, that we are stepping up to be part of the solution. Part of that solution is legislation. Part of that solution is addressing what you see happening in your neighborhoods, in your families. One in four women will be victims of domestic violence in their lifetime. 60 people in this room, it's a pretty high number. We need to make sure that we are doing everything we can to see that we don't wind up in a documentary similar to this. I'd encourage all of you to, to take an opportunity to, to watch the full documentary, to join the movement, and if it's not this movement, any movement that works with us to help stop the violence, to help change the paradigm of what the communication is and what we teach our children. Like I said, I don't want my children to ever experience it, but they need to understand what it does to a family and what it does to a community. It is not acceptable. You saw Malala in that, and I had the opportunity this year, the privilege to meet her and to speak to her and to introduce her at an event and to see someone so young be engaged on a international level is, it brings tears to your eyes. It makes you understand why these issues are so important. We talked about when the Nigerian girls were kidnapped. How many people on social media put hashtag bring back our girls? And that's a start, but it's not enough. Because we watch it internationally, we watch what's happening, but we really, really need to focus what's happening in our own backyards. We need to know that we're doing what we can to change our culture, to bring our children up in a society that values women. How many girls do you think ask the question, why is my body's only value the honor it brings to my family? Why am I less because I am a female? Why was I abused? Did I deserve it? Do I deserve it? Why was I raped? Did I do something? Too many times we put the blame on the women or on the girls. Human trafficking, the Super Bowl is the largest human trafficking incident in the world. When New Jersey hosted the Super Bowl in 2013, 2014, sorry, legislation was signed to combat human trafficking. The average age of a human trafficked girl is 14. And there are 27 million young girls trafficked globally at this time. And those numbers continue to, to rise. We talk about securing our borders. And yes, we do. But we need to secure it from the human trafficking. That's what we need to stop. We need to put our foot down. We need to talk to our legislators. We need to work with organizations wherever they may be. I used to run the New Jersey Division on Women, and we worked with agencies throughout the state. And those programs gave back to every single one of the women that they served. And sometimes it was just support, sometimes it was protection. We need to make sure that we're doing all we can and in the words, I'm going to quote Malala. They thought that the bullets would silence us, but they failed. And then out of that silence came thousands of voices. They thought they would change our aim and stop our ambitions. But nothing changed in life except this. Weakness, fear, and hopelessness died. Strength, power, and courage were born. In this brave new world, can you imagine a world where women live without discrimination or fear of violence? Have chances, choices, and equal voices to make decisions about issues that affect them? I can. Thank you.